We live in the 90s, part one, when Tupac and Biggie died. Um, before I begin this story, I just want to let you all know, so you can understand this, this, this story to the utmost. Um, when I was living in the 90s, I was a young teenager, and I grew up in a single parent household. My mother was there, but my father wasn't there. So my role models, my father figure, people that I looked up to were the rappers. So whatever they did, I did. I listened to everything they said, whether it was how to roll a blunt, <laughs> or whether it was fighting the power. I did whatever they told me to do, on wax, to the T. All right? So now you can kind of like understand the story more than I'm about to tell you. All right? Let's begin. So I used to listen to the 80s rappers, you know, uh, people such as Run DMC, Curtis Blow, Fat Boys, uh, Cool Mo D, LL Cool J. But when rap really hit me, when, when hip hop really engulfed my life was when the Native Tongues came out. Native Tongues consisted of Jungle Brothers, De La Soul, Trial Called Quest, Queen Latifah, Chi Ali, and Leaders of the New School with Busta Rhymes. And at that moment in hip hop, you know, we had like this whole being uh, uh, proud that you were black. You know, at that moment, you know, Spike Lee came out with movies such as Do the Right Thing, Jungle Fever, White Man Can't Jump, Malcolm X. Uh, we had black clothing lines such as Carl Canine, Cross Colors, and it was just a very proud moment to be black. We had black TV shows. It was just ridiculous. And I wish that you, you all were there. You know, I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. But it was just a, a, a beautiful day of time to be black and proud. I mean, Brand Nubians came out with uh, Slow Down and One For All. Brand Nubians. And it was just crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? We was wearing dashikis and African medallions and Malcolm X hats. And then that Afrocentricity changed when, in hip hop, it changed when N.W.A. came out. They came out with gangster music, gangster rap. And we took off all of the African stuff and started wearing L.A. Raiders jackets and hats. And N.W.A. Like, just took the world by storm. I mean, you never heard anybody say F the police. You never heard anybody call themselves N-I-G-G-A with attitude. And I was all for it. And then eventually, you know, they broke up and hip hop was kind of like at a standstill. And I'll never forget this rap group, group called Digital Underground. They emerged and they put out singles such as Do What You Like, um, Humpty Hump, and Kiss Me and I Kiss You Back. And we see this guy for the first time called Tupac on the Kiss Me and I Kiss You Back video. And we've known Tupac, or we didn't, really didn't even know his name, but we, we, know, we, we knew him because he was the hype man and the dancer for Digital Underground, the rap group. So to make long story short, uh, Digital Underground comes out with a song off this soundtrack of the movie starring Dan Aykroyd. I can't remember the, the name of it. Um, that's kind of irrelevant, you know. They did make a guess a, a, a cameo appearance in that bit, uh, in that movie, um, but they come out with this song called "Same Song," and Tupac is in it, and he's rap, rapping, rhyming for the first time, and we're like, "Oh, okay." So then after that, he puts out a single called "Trap." They got me trapped. Nah, man, you can't keep a black man down, and I'm like, "Wow, he's like balancement. He's like this black power dude and." this gangster dude at the same time and I'm intrigued and then I don't know whether his album came first or the movie came first but he puts out the album Tupacalypse and that has Brenda's got a baby I get around when my homies call and I'm like wow and then the movie comes out Juice and I'm like whoa this guy is super talented and while in the process of that happening you know, I'm listening to, I forgot, I can't remember whether it was Tony Touch or DJ Clue's mixtape, right? This guy, Biggie Smalls, he's rhyming over everybody's beats and he's killing it. So then he puts out a single from the soundtrack uh, called Who's the Man 
the movie Who's the Man Starring Dre and Ed Lover from Yo MTV Raps. And the song's called Party and Bullish. And I'm like, wow, I'm waiting for the album. And then he puts out Juicy. I think that's the name of the song. Uh, um, but it was it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine, and I'm going crazy, right? Is that's a sample from Juicy Fruit? Juicy, and I'm I'm going crazy, right? And then he puts out an, another single, um, one more chance to remix, and I'm like, whoa, whoa. Now prior to those two songs that he put out, Craig Mack comes out with Flavor in Your Ear, and Biggie hops on the Flavor in Your Ear remix and kills it. And I'm just like, yo, come on, what, 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 what's up with the album? What's up with the album? I get the album ready to die, and I'm, I'm just taken back from. I'm, I'm like, you got to be kidding me! It's like, sonically, the best album I've ever heard. One of the best, aside from Wu Tang's album, first album, Raekwon's first album, and Nas's first album. But one of the best, right? So I'm sitting here like, yo, this guy is crazy. And then you know, Tupac and Biggie becomes friends. And I'm like, wow, I hope they do an album together. And a few months later, um, Tupac work, walks in Quad Studios in Manhattan and gets shot up. He gets out of the hospital and he blames Biggie and Tupac. He claims, excuse me, he, he claims Biggie and Puff Daddy sets him up. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So Tupac goes on this rampage of, you know, bashing Biggie and he comes, puts out this uh, song, dissing Biggie called Hit Him Up, and we're just sitting here like, what is going on? And white media takes this beef that Tupac and Biggie had and runs with it and says that this is East Coast versus West Coast. And now the hip hop community is divided because you have to choose sides. Snoop Dogg gets up in the Source uh, Awards and says, <laughs> New York ain't got no love for Snoop Dogg. What well, F New York? Snoop Dogg have, puts out a video where, he, where he's in New York busting down buildings and, and he puts out the single called New York, New York, where he's dissing New York. And while in the process of him filming that video, his trailer gets shot up. Mob Deep puts out a, a diss song towards LA called LA, LA. And we're just living in this hip hop culture and we're just seeing it being divided. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Tupac gets arrested for sexual assault while in the mess, midst of him, you know, in, being in jail, he's, I mean, albums are still being put out. Biggie's getting ready for his uh, second album to come out called Life After Death. And hip hop is like at a standstill right now, you know? Make a long story short, Tupac gets out, he signs to Death Row. Uh, Death Row is like coming up, you know, LA is like big now. You know, they got rap groups such as uh, Dog Pound, uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Tupac, and it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? And you know, Biggie is, the, 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 the East Coast is, is, is coming up too, you know, they, they got the bad boy camp such as, you know, uh, uh, groups such as Mace, uh, uh, 112, Faith Evans, Biggie, Junior Mafia. Well, they weren't weren't really signed to them, but you know they was under that camp. And I'm sitting back and I'm I'm looking at it. I'm I'm saying, wow, this music is being, excuse me, put out, put out, put out, back to back to back to back. And I'm like, yo, this is amazing. All of this music is coming out, and all of it's good. And then all of a sudden. Uh, I get the word that Tupac got shot in Las Vegas, and I'm like, please, Tupac will bounce back from that. That's nothing. And he dies. And I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, that's my role model. That's my father figure. That's the person that I looked up to. That's the person that I admired. And I'm just like torn. And the best way that I can explain it to you all, millennials, that is, is when XX Tension died and Nipsey Hussle died. That's how I felt. How you all felt. When those two died, I felt that way. And um, you know, Biggie does his last interview on Rap City with Joe Claire, and he's like, "Yo, I I wish I would have you know made up with that dude 
you know, because he, he once was my friend. And he said, Biggie said, you know, I'm, I'm going to make right of this. I want to bring the East Coast and the West Coast together, and I want hip-hop to be in harmony once again. And he goes out to California, and he gets shot, and Biggie dies. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, of course, you know, I'm not crying. Of course, you know, I, I didn't know them like that. You know, I, I never met uh, Tupac and Biggie in real life, but they still influenced me. I felt like I knew him. And I was totally hurt. And I, I, don't, I don't ever think that uh, hip-hop ever bounced back from that. We lost two icons that meant a lot to us. Rest in peace, Tupac Biggie. Um, if you all want me to continue doing these stories, let me know in the comment section. Based on the views, the likes, and the comments, I'll do more. I have more stories about the 90s if you want to hear it. Like, comment, share, subscribe. One.